Among the teeming masses in Tokyo, the search is on for new rugby playing talent. As the country looks to build a women's side for the 2016 Olympics, the Japanese Union launched a campaign to attract new players, targeting those already involved in sports such as judo and karate. And when one top exponent of the martial arts spotted the poster campaign in her local gym, women's rugby had found its own karate kid. I started karate when I was five. My father is a karate master. I have a twin sister and both of us started at the same time. I won the World Karate Championship three times. Aya had reached the top of the world's karate rankings at the tender age of 14. Now 24, she's looking for a different challenge and pastures new to compete with the best in the world. So she decided to move from the dojo to the rugby pitch to test her skills against a fresh set of opponents. I hadn't played rugby before, but very much enjoyed watching games. I was asked to run a 50 metres dash and they checked my basic physical strength. I enjoyed that. But then I was asked to demonstrate a pass at the tryout and I was not so good. But obviously she did enough to impress the selection panel and was chosen in the top 24 from 300 hopefuls and then began the steepest of learning curves on the training field. My first proper rugby training session was at a training camp. I was very nervous. It was the first time I tried tackling and passing. My head was in a state of panic. My first game was a practice match during the training camp, but I was totally useless because I didn't know where to move or what to do. The two sports share many basic skills that helped Aya to impress in the training camp, despite the difficulties in adapting to a new sport. I'm still learning to play rugby. Hopefully, I can use some skills I learned from karate and rugby. The similarity between karate and rugby is that both of them test your physical strength. In karate, you usually use your hands and legs, but rugby requires the whole body to play, which I haven't got used to yet. And with the physical strength she possesses, she now finds herself on the fringe of the national squad as a flanker. During our visit, she was given the chance to train with the team and was ball girl for their fixture against Hong Kong. Having had a first-hand glimpse of women's international rugby, she now harbors big ambitions as she continues to get to grips with the game. It's slightly early, but my ambition is to be selected as a national team member for the Rugby World Cup and the Olympics, and hopefully to win the Games. And her ambitions extend far beyond a stylish pose for the cameras. Aya has starred in a movie alongside her twin sister, Miki, also a karate champion. On top of that, she's training to become a qualified beautician. Proof that brawn and beauty are not mutually exclusive. I'm quite an aesthetic person. It's totally different from rugby. I'd like to help my clients to become more beautiful. Drawing on these many and varied aspects of her life, Aya clearly believes that she has much to offer her newfound rugby colleagues. When we are travelling on the way home from training camp with Japan, some of my teammates will often ask me for some makeup help and advice. So I help them out and give them some useful tips. When they are playing rugby, they don't think about things such as hair and makeup. However, even rugby players, like all women, want to be beautiful. 